So at this point, no doubt you've heard that Claude 3.5 Sonnet is good. Very good. It's now number one in the coding arena, beating out GPT 4.0, Gemini 1.5 Pro, even beating out its larger predecessor, Claude 3 Opus. AGI rolls around only once. Subscribe. I've tested its coding abilities and can't help but be pretty impressed. There does seem to be a very strong leap forward in its ability to code, to add features, to troubleshoot. In fact, as you can see here, there's not as many votes that has been thrown here. So over time, as this improves, as this number increases, I wouldn't be surprised if this difference between GPT 4.0 and Cloud 3.5, if it continues growing. The scores haven't been updated yet, so it looks like the last update was on June 23rd. But if you've been following along, if you've been interested in what Anthropic and Cloud 3.5 have been up to, this is a great follow, Alex Albert. I'll leave a link in the description. So he's working at Anthropic on Claude AI, and he's been dropping some knowledge bombs as of late. The latest one is this. This was posted within this hour. They're announcing the Build with Claude June 2024 contest, and they're giving out $30,000 in Anthropic API credits. All you need to do is build and share an app that uses Claude through the Anthropic API. The contest is pretty simple. Build an app that demonstrates creativity and effectively uses the Anthropic API. Submit your project through the linked Google form, and they encourage you to post your project on X as well as tag themselves. So tag Alex or Anthropic AI. And you have until July 10th at 12 p.m. Pacific. So two weeks to create and submit it. And they're going to be selecting the top three projects based on creativity, impact, usefulness, and implementation. And each of the three winners will get $10,000 in API credits. Oh boy. I'm pretty sure Pliny already jailbroke Claude and uh, is up to no good with it. But if this is something that you're interested in, I encourage everybody to try it out. I would not even worry if you necessarily win the contest or not. I think the practice of creating something simple, perhaps even using Claude to create it, like have it type up the code for you. Again, you don't have to get complicated. If you're a god tier developer, sure, go for it. If you haven't coded before, or just starting out doing something very simple that uses Claude, specifically their API to, to produce something and just submit it. But even if you don't care to do that, at the very least, watch what everyone else submits. They're going to be tagging Alex and Anthropic API and Anthropic AI so that you're able to see kind of what projects people are building. I would not be surprised if we saw some pretty insane things come out of this. You might recall Hume, we've covered it briefly on this channel, is your empathic AI voice. And I'm so happy to be covering it once again. Hearing the pureolation in your voice just makes me smile too. Wow, whatever it is you're so excited about, I can't wait to hear all about it. Your happiness is truly infectious. Fill me in. What's got you so over the moon? It looks like Hume AI is detecting notes of ecstasy in my voice. But if I'm being perfectly honest, I am getting quite concerned about how good Claude is getting. And perhaps a hint of unease there. I totally get it. The rapid progress of AI can be a little unsettling at times. I want to win that contest. I will go to any length to do so. I hear the steely determination in your voice. You're really going all in to win this contest, huh? And maybe we can find a way for you to pursue victory without compromising your principles. That's what do you think? So basically they pick up on your emotions and kind of match your emotional tone, so to speak. And when they ran Anthropics Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model through their evaluation system for creative ability, Surprise, surprise, it emerged as the new leader. Cloud 3.5 Sonnet beats out Gemini Ultra, GPT-4 Turbo, and all the other models. Now, on top of this, Cloud and the team have been very busy adding some new UI features that might indeed be very helpful. A sidebar to organize some of the chats that we've had, but much more importantly, this. So this is the referred to it as projects. So you're now able to create custom knowledge bases called projects with your own files, documents, code, etc. When you start a new chat within a project, Claude has access to all that info. And on the team plan, you can share and collab on all these projects with your teammates. So this is similar to the custom GPTs that OpenAI was rolling out with the 
One difference is this is just for your teammates. So you're able to share it on the team plan, but it looks like right now you're not able to do so, you know, to just anyone, to, to the public. They've added custom instructions. So if you need to give some specific things to Claude to keep in mind as it answers your questions, like for some reason responding with a thick New York accent, why? But okay, well, at least it's not the Golden Gate Bridge anymore. But this works really well for situations where you just prefer certain outputs. So for example, if you're coding, you can always ask for the specific language that you want, or you can always do chain of thought reasoning by asking it to think through something step by step. A lot of people put, you know, respond with short answers and to the point text. I would test to see if that uh, may reduce the quality of the answer sometimes. It's sometimes better for the models to think through their answers and they do that by, you know, putting tokens on the screen so longer answers may be better than shorter. You gotta kinda test it out. It really depends on what you're using it for. This person seems blown away that these features that they announced are available right now. I thought you were supposed to say available in the coming weeks and then keep delaying them for months and months. Which unfortunately, that is kind of the case with OpenAI right now. They're delaying the rollout of their voice mode that they've demoed um, during their spring update. Now, they did say they're gonna be rolling out to a small alpha group of testers, and we are beginning to see that it is indeed happening. We are beginning to, you know, to see people posting videos of them messing around with it and using it. Here's an example of that. This is legitimate as far as I can tell. Uh, we know it's rolling out. Account seems legit, but of course we can't know for sure, but here's the Even demo. Even though it's summer, there's this refreshing coolness in the air that just makes you wanna smile and take a deep breath of that crisp, invigorating breeze. The sun's shining, but it's got this lovely gentle warmth that's just perfect for a light jacket or a cozy stir. So may the odds be ever in your favor and all that. Meanwhile, another secret model is popping up in the arena rankings. It's called the late June chatbot. So last time we saw this, it was OpenAI testing the release of GPT 4.0. They had some naming convention like I'm a good GPT 2 bot. Another one was something like I am also a good GPT 2 bot. I forget exactly, but it was kind of similar to this. It was revealed later that it was in fact GPT 4.0. So is this OpenAI testing their late June chatbot? We shall see. Coming back to Cloud 3.5, it's able to code up a sound generator. Now, now it uses 11 Labs API, which 11 Labs is the famous kind of AI voices. They have a lot more features that are rolling out that we'll talk about in a second, but one of them is text to sound. So you can type in things like an ocean breeze or bang or a video game power-up sound and it'll generate that effect and play it for you. So again, if you're building something for that Claude, build with Claude competition, this might be potentially something that you use. Maybe use an API to hook into 11 labs, produce a voice, produce some sound effects, etc. Another interesting thing is this company multi or multi multiplayer is joining OpenAI and they're asking what if desktop computers were inherently multiplayer? What if the operating system placed people on equal footing to apps? So this company was, you can think of it kind of as just a remote computer access company, kind of, but now they are joining OpenAI to work with OpenAI to do that plus AI. We're not 100% sure exactly what they're doing, but it's gonna be interesting to find out. So this is multi and they're saying a screen share done right and everything else too. So they have features like basically screen sharing multiplayer, right? So communicate faster with shared cursors, drawing, using screen share from up to 10 people at a time and various other tools for advanced screen sharing and remote desktop assistance, etc. So I have a few ideas of what I'm going to attempt to build for this Claude contest. I don't expect to win. It's probably going to be pretty simple, but I do view this as an opportunity to kind of uh, just learn something new. Here's Ethan Mollick. He's saying that, you know, if you ask Claude to create something like a snake game, it has a lot of sort of examples of that in its training data. But if you give it something weird and out of its sort of uh, data distribution, it seems like it does a pretty good job of that. Here the prompt was, I need you to create a simulation where I am a lighthouse keeper in a cosmic lighthouse and I have two beams, one that attracts space leviathons, 
and the other repels them. And there's also gravity to take into account, make it fun and make the graphics good, and also add lore and make it have a goal. And this was the sort of final uh, output of that. So with that said, good luck to all that are attempting this. We will be watching in anticipation. There's a few more bits of news that I wanted to play from Eleven Labs. They created a short tutorial on how to use a brand new feature that I've tested. And I got to say, it's, it's interesting. It's still not perfect, but I'm pretty excited. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the UI is a bit clunky. I think they just launched it. It's still in beta. There's like little issues with it. So I'm not quite getting uh, what I want out of it, but most of it I think is just the UI bugginess. But the functionality seems like it's getting pretty good. It allows you to put whatever inflection you want into the AI's voice by just speaking it out loud. So instead of that kind of monotone voice or a random inflection, you can specify. Here's an example. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am the danger. I am the one who knocks. I might post a more kind of involved tutorial a little bit later. I had some difficulty doing this, and that's just the UI issues. But here's one of the people at Eleven Labs kind of showcasing how this would work if everything's working properly. Again, I was able to get the functionality to work. I was just limited by, I feel like, some of the UI features. With that said, my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching. So let's start fixing some of these clips. Um, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is this clip right here, where he said he'll stop at nothing to avoid them. I noticed a strange like question mark at the end of that sentence that just doesn't fit. So let's have a quick listen again. He'll stop at nothing to avoid them. And now, so we obviously don't like that. We want to change that. You could just keep clicking generate audio, and he might say it in a different way. Let's hear how he says it this time. He'll stop at nothing to avoid them. So he seems to be in this pattern where it's generating over and over in the way that we don't like it to. So that's where speech to speech comes into play and it's very effective. So I'm going to click on the clip. I'm going to scroll down here on the bottom right where it says dictation. That's speech to speech. And then I'm going to click the microphone icon and then start speaking and performing the way I want it to be said exactly. And it's going to match that um, to a T. So let's go ahead and try that. He'll stop at nothing to avoid them. Once I'm done, I hit stop. And I'm going to hit generate audio STS. Give it just a moment there to generate the new audio that I just spoke. I'm going to move these clips, shift click them and drag them over just so we have some room on the timeline, maybe a little bit more. And now let's have a listen. He'll stop it. Nothing to avoid them. Perfect. And he spoke it the exact way that I input it. Ha ha. That's a good one. Okay, obviously, that doesn't sound realistic. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to click on the clip. And I'm going to add a little bit of laughter to the beginning of that to see if it sounds a little bit more natural. <laughs> That's a good one. Speaking of numbers, I tried to count all the stars last night. <laughs> That's a good one. Speaking of numbers, I tried to count all the stars oh, last really? night. Oh, How... really? I think that sounds a lot better. That sounds pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty good.